Hi, welcome to one of our training videos for the Garmin eTrex SE. This is actually an extract from one of our videos that we have in what we call the online resource. The online resource is the GPS training online training course that you can access 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And it's packed full of videos. There's well over 20, 30 videos about how you use the Garmin eTrex SE. And this is the ones that you get free. You can sign up for a free option, but alternatively you can sign up for a premium option. And with that, you get access to all the training videos. We've actually also got an offer in place that if you get a discount code from the uh, link below, you actually also get email support as well as access to the training videos. So as you work through those videos, if you have this, what we call a bronze support package, if you have any questions about how you use Garmin eTrex SE, you also have access to our tech team who could help you through those problems. I very much hope you enjoy the video and if you can support us here at GPS Training, it would always be very much appreciated. Hi, this is Andy from GPS Training. In this short video, we're just gonna talk you through some battery save tips to get the best out of your eTrex SE device. Some of these settings you may just change if you're getting low on batteries and haven't got a spare set of batteries. We recommend using a good quality set of AA batteries. We tend to use rechargeable batteries, NIMH. We've got a good brand, uh, Energizer batteries, which are a 2,300 milliamp hour capacity. I wouldn't go any smaller than 2,300 milliamps for your rechargeable batteries. If you're using alkaline batteries, just make sure they're a good quality battery. For colder temperatures, lithium batteries work well, or something like the Eneloop Pro batteries, um, which are rechargeable batteries that we do stock in our GPS training stock um, shop, along with the Energizer rechargeable batteries. One of the first things to make sure is on your unit is that you set it for the type of battery that you're using, otherwise your battery can go down really quick. Now bear in mind, when you're sitting inside and you're first learning how to use your device, because it's trying to lock onto satellites through potentially a limited view of sky or window, it will use more battery than when it's outside. I can see at the top here, yeah, I've just got three bars on my batteries here. So I'm just gonna go down to settings just to show you some settings. So I've used the down button to go into settings. I'm gonna press okay. And I'm just gonna go down into the system settings, show you where the battery type is first. So if we go down to, just right near the bottom, battery type, I've got this set as NIMH. So do make sure you change it to the type of battery you're using. So things like the Eneloop batteries that come pre-charged, we put it on the pre-charge NIMH. If you're using alkaline batteries, obviously alkaline lithium batteries. I've got some standard NIMH batteries. That's what we've got it set on. So you just use the up and down arrow and press OK to select the type of battery you're using. Remember, if you do change batteries, and especially if you change battery type, we do recommend recalibrating your electronic compass as we showed in our earlier video. So I'm just gonna hit the back button to come out of there. So we go right back up to the top where we've got our settings. I'm gonna start with the satellite one. Now, to be honest, I'd prefer to have the satellites picking up the multi-GNSS, so it's picking up multi um, types of uh, satellite systems for the best accuracy and quickest signal. If you were struggling with battery and didn't have a spare set of batteries, it will reduce your accuracy potentially if you're in a more challenging environment, but you could put it at GPS only. If you put it in demo mode, because you're just practicing with your unit inside, learning how to use the menus, when it's in demo mode, you see a cross across the satellite signal at the top left. That will stop it locking onto satellites, but it will save battery. If you turn your unit on and off, it will cancel demo mode, but I'm just gonna press OK there and put it back to multi-GNSS. But going on to GPS only is gonna save battery. So you often see when Garmin quote their battery figures in the spec, it is based on you using GPS only and not multi-band. We prefer multi-band for the better accuracy and it helps when you're in a more challenging environment. But GPS only is gonna save battery. When you're inside and you're just, you know, looking at screens on unit, maybe changing things, demo mode's not a bad one to go in because it will stop it locking onto satellites. Just make sure you take it back out of demo mode when you're outside. You know it's in demo mode because of the cross you can see in the top left of the screen. So I'm gonna say okay for GPS. I'm actually gonna put it back to multi-GNS, but GPS only would give you the best battery and then hit the back arrow. 
The next one down is display. So display will really affect your battery. Because we're videoing today with the unit, I've got it set really high backlight and to stay on all the time. You wouldn't normally have that outside. So if I press OK on display, you'll find the brightness, especially on a sunny day when the, when the screen's been shone on by the sunlight, you've got it in sunlight, you find you can actually put it down. I've had it down to 20% and 10%. So don't put the back up high, backlight up high when it's a nice sunny day. It's something to try when you're outside. So I've actually put that one even 30% inside here with no sunlight shining on it. You can still see the screen nice and clearly, but potentially you put that a bit lower. You wouldn't have it always on. You would put it to something like timeout where it just goes dimmer after 15 or 30 seconds, we would tend to recommend. I just have it on all the time at the minute, just because we're filming the videos, but definitely put it onto something like 30 seconds or the default normally 15 seconds. So that's the other one to change there and um, display. And the only other one really is um, if you were following a route, I get to the map setting, sorry, um, where are we? Um, not be in this setting, it'll be on the map one at the top. We have the map set for track up. So that means as you're navigating a, a route that you've sent your unit, as you turn with the unit, the, the, it turns in the direction you need to travel. Now with this unit not having maps, I think you would be better leaving it as track up. You can put it as north up and that will save battery, but it's not as easy sometimes to get your bearings on what you're trying to follow because you haven't got a map on the unit. But just so you know, north up would actually save battery. And the only other advice really to give you for battery life is um, your spare batteries keep inside an inside pocket so they're nice and warm before you put them in the unit. When you're actually navigating with the unit, don't leave it necessarily on the map screen or the compass screen. The map screen will use the most battery. Now bear in mind, it's not a color map moving, but it still uses more battery than leaving it on something like the trip computer. And then you can simply hit the up button to go back to the compass or the map screen. So we hope you found this video useful on some battery save tips when you're using the unit in general. Now we haven't actually paired the unit yet with Bluetooth, but you have got an option to pair it with the Explore app. So if someone was messaging you on your phone, you get notifications come through. It's how we can sync routes onto the unit without using a computer. If you do pair it with the Explore app, which we are gonna show you in a video in this module, when you're out and about, if your batteries are getting low, it's not a bad thing to go into the settings in the Bluetooth and turn that off. I'm just gonna show you back in the settings again. So this is something you may not have turned on. So the pair phone, it would actually be paired and then we'd get the option to go into the phone settings and un um, not unpair, but just basically turn off. And then in the system settings, I'm um, <coughs> just gonna go through, see if there's any other settings. I don't think there's anything else there we would tend to. No, it's really just the one where it's paired. We haven't got it paired at the minute. So when we actually do pair it, I'll just go back to pair phone, which we'll be doing in the next video. You then have the explore app open you pair it with the app you will get the option in this menu which will show when we do the pairing video how you can disable the bluetooth and that will potentially save a bit of battery so i'm just going to cancel the pairing there so we hope you found this video useful on just some battery save tips for your e-trex se unit and thanks for watching